in our technology report, a Ghanaian social enterprise tech company and pedigree is on a mission to fight the global counterfeit trade, which accounts for a whopping $200 billion per year. And pedigree has created a way to quickly confirm the legitimacy of real medicines from counterfeit drugs sold under a product name without proper authorization. Africa 54 technology reporter Paul Ndiho spoke with Eugene Kwekubuadu, Head of Corporate Affairs and Marketing for Empedigree. Empedigree is a social enterprise technology company as we like to define it. We primarily build technologies and harness them for the purposes of anti-counterfeiting. Counterfeiting is a, has become a global menace, essentially given the proliferation of various forms of technologies. Just about anything at all can be counterfeited, from your favorite cologne to your uh, piece of shirt. But the stakes are typically higher when the item being counterfeited is one that has life-depending implications, such as medicines. So our company, a little over a decade ago, proposed a bold solution to the medicinal counterfeiting problem in particular, that by allowing end-user authentication, you can empower consumers and patients to be able to sift out a counterfeit medicine from an original one. How successful has that uh, program been? We've seen close to about 2 billion product authentications. That essentially means about 2 billion times that consumers have had to dispel doubts and fears and have been able to pick the right product out of what would have been a counterfeit one. These products will be medicines, such as gripe water that a mother wants to give the baby, or say a contraceptive that a young person might want to take in order to avoid a possible pregnancy, for instance, all very sensitive situations. So from the data, we uh, statistically infer that hundreds of millions of people have been impacted by our work. And day in, day out, we get feedback from consumers who express their gratitude about how the technology has affected their lives. From the foregoing, from these indicators, we'll say that we've, been, we've, been, we've done very well. Uh, we've expanded our footprint from Ghana, which is a, a small country, comparatively, to now about 14 different countries in Africa and Asia and counting. We've pivoted primarily from medicine, medicinal anti-counterfeiting, to other areas like agriculture, for instance, where we are now working with ministries of agriculture around Africa to serialize packs of seeds and ensure that farmers are buying the right seeds and not buying unwholesome seeds and planting them and discovering down the line that they were sold a knockoff version of the seed that they wanted. So from these indicators, I think we can confidently say that we've been doing quite well. How about uh, people who say that uh, no matter what uh, people have been able to do, companies uh, like yours have done, uh, there's still a lot out there. Counterfeit uh, medicine is all over the place. They are dominating the market. How much of that uh, are you guys been able to tackle? I would say that those concerns will be justified. And for two primary reasons, I think it was the first president of this country that said that uh, the success of a thing must not be judged by how far it has come, but essentially by how far it has responded to the need that it was created for. The issue, though, has to do with the fact that companies like ours, and indeed many others that are working within the social enterprise space, cannot fix these problems by themselves. We do require the enabling environment. We do require governmental support and governmental ownership. If you take Empedigree, for instance, uh, you would realize that the countries in which we've been able to have the significant amounts of impact have been the countries where the governments have been welcoming. If you contrast the case of Nigeria with the case of Ghana, which is where we are, for instance, you see that, for instance, from 2008 to 2010, where anti counterfeiting of medicines such as anti-malarials and some forms of antibiotics was at um, a ridiculous high, high percentage of 60%. We've seen it drop significantly to 12% by 2016, and in some of the recent estimates to 4% and falling. That is a tremendous success story that we have been able to work with the authorities in Nigeria to accomplish. We have not been able to do that in Ghana, simply because we've not been able to set in motion the kind of partnership that we have seen in Nigeria. Let's go back to ordinary consumers. Do they really understand uh, what this technology is about? In Africa, a lot of people buy their airtime. I think Africa has more mobile phones than any other continent in the world. 
Now, a lot of people already are very familiar with the mobile phone. Uh, and the way they buy airtime is to buy a piece of paper with a, a, a set of codes on it and then to type that code into a mobile phone. People have been doing this system and have become acclimatized to it already. Our solution simply leverage on that existing okay, infrastructure. So okay, well, the, the, all the consumer has to do uh, is to first of all look out for the medicinal uh, pack that has yes, the code yes, uh, so and then to take that pack and send the code via SMS or USSD and within seconds receive information. That was VOS Paul Diho speaking to Eugene Kwekubuadu, Head of Corporate Affairs and Marketing at Empedigree Accra, Ghana. And that's our show for today. Be sure to watch Africa 54 on our website at voaafrica.com. From all of us here in Washington, thanks for watching.